a little embarrassing, but my best mistake was an important mistake. So my best mistake was uh, launching a balloon payload that did not work. So it was a thesis project for me at UC Berkeley, and it was to measure the cosmic microwave background radiation. So it was a, uh, a big balloon payload. It was quite advanced, very complicated. It had wonderful new inventions in it, and uh, it's going to be uh, the pioneering experiment uh, that uh, would measure this background radiation really well. And, uh, well, we launched it and it did not work. So I got to write a thesis about a project that did not work. And that had a lot of learning in it and a lot of things to think about. So, um, <clears throat> well, I should say it wasn't a complete surprise that it might not work, because this was the first time we had ever tried to fly that payload. Mm -hmm. And our group had actually talked about whether we should go fly it even though we hadn't tested everything about it. So the upshot was, well, we said we should probably try it anyway, even though we haven't tested everything, because there's so many ways it could go wrong that we should just try. <clears throat> we'll learn something that we wouldn't have learned at home. <clears throat> so we did that. And it went up, and it failed for three different reasons. Three. <laughs> Not just one, Not three. Two, three. <clears throat> so one of them was a reason we never would have thought of testing at home. And that was that the humidity in Texas at the launch site is 100%, which means if anything's even a little bit cooler than the round, than the air around, it's going to get soaking wet. So we had a motor on the top of our apparatus, and water condensed on the motor, and it worked its way in, and it rusted the motor. <clears throat> so that tele the thing went up, and the rotor didn't turn, and the, nothing happened. There were two other reasons that had to do with electronics being too cold, and we would have found those at home if we had tried making a cold, cold test. So... Anyway, we collectively decided to try this experiment, and we went to Texas, and we flew the payload, and it didn't work, and we brought it home. Uh, it was a huge disappointment, um, but I thought, well, what did we learn? Number one, it wasn't wrong. It wasn't stupid to make this decision, um, because there were upsides to doing it that way. Uh, number one, uh, you get there quicker, because you find all the mistakes at once, mm -hmm. and so you can, uh, next time you fly, you get it to work. So my lab partners and fellow students and, and uh, thesis advisor, they all fixed all that stuff uh, while I was off getting a new job. <clears throat> so it was a success. This was actually a good strategy in the end. Uh, but you can also say, well, uh, a pretty general conclusion is if you do not test it, it will not work. This is just tempting the gods. You cannot do that. If you do not testing, you should be sure that it will not work. Then you'll actually begin to think of what test it really takes. So um, if you think, well, why don't I just take a chance? Yeah, I can tell you what the answer is. It won't work. <laughs> How many times did you ever write a software program that worked the first time? Never. Never. <laughs> me either. So uh, I ask other people the same thing. They always give me that answer. So testing's required. No question about it. <clears throat> and it, um, it actually comes to be pretty important when it's a strategy question in a bigger organization. So here we are at NASA. And uh, people are going to say, are you sure you need to do that test? And the uh, answer that I give is, if you do not test it, it will not work. This is not a matter of chance. This is a matter of certainty. And uh, there's no probabilities of failure. You cannot calculate how many nines of probability there are. You just have to say, I don't know. If I don't know, then it will not work. So it's a really good thing to remember because everybody around you will push you to say, well, we're out of time. We're out of money. We need your product right now. Uh, give it to me right now. And you have to say, no. It's just uh, one of those fundamental things about existence. You cannot say it works when you don't know. And um, anyway, so that's pretty basic. It sounds like you learned a lot from that experience, um, that you had a number of takeaways, and ultimately, even though it may have been a short-term failure, it was a long-term success for you. Yes, it really did turn into a success in a, in a surprising way. Because after I got my thesis project finished, uh, actually even before it was done, I got a phone call from NASA in New York. Uh, my uh, future postdoc advisor wanted me to come to work for him. So I said yes. And I thought, well, I'll get out of this cosmic background stuff. It's too hard. <laughs> my thesis project failed. I don't want to do that anymore. But uh, nature had another thing in mind for me. Uh, six months after I got there, NASA said well, they wanted new proposals for new satellite missions. Uh, because five years after the Apollo, what are we going to do now? I said, boss, my thesis project didn't work. We should try it in outer space. 
So we called up our friends, we wrote a proposal, it went in, that was 1974. Fifteen years later, professional engineers made it work, it worked fine. They did the tests <laughs> and they said, okay, we made it work. And this is sort of a reminder that uh, if they'd asked me whether they needed to do some of those tests, I still would have said, oh, probably not necessary. So I've come to, now I say it this way, uh, John Mather's opinion does not affect the hardware. <laughs> the hardware is not listening to me. And, uh, and if you want to know if it's going to work, you better test it. So now that I'm more famous, people think my opinion makes more difference. It still has no effect on hardware.